Well, Bob Mueller has now rested in his first trial as special counsel, the one against Paul Manafort. There are new signs tonight. Mueller's gathering evidence for another potential trial of a man who worked with Trump far longer than Manafort, Roger Stone. Mueller's grand jury just heard from Stone associate Kristen Davis, and she is saying, number one, she's concerned Mueller is coming for Stone, but number two, she doesn't believe anything bad happened. Did you come away from your session today believing that the investigators are coming for Roger Stone? I, I did. Uh, I think that there's cause for concern based on that they just want to believe something happened, which I don't believe it did. She doesn't believe it did. Now, she's one of at least seven people connected to Stone who Mueller is interested in. New reports tonight, he's also looking beyond collusion and into Roger Stone's alleged threats to the political activists he once described as his intermediary to WikiLeaks, Randy Credico. That may seem familiar because Credico first aired those concerns in our interview back in May. Quote, I'm going to take that dog away from you. Nothing you can do about it. I'm paraphrasing. I will prove to the world you're a liar. He's afraid I'm going to unload on him. I Why, is he, on Roger Stone. Why is he Why is he bringing he, your dog who we have on the screen? Why is he bringing your dog into this? Uh, because uh, he's a sick man. He is delusional. Memories. Roger Stone and his lawyer deny any wrongdoing here, and it probably would take more than only angry texts to make a full obstruction case. And Stone does do something else that's relevant here. He follows the Trump view that just about any public fight is worth having if it's good for attention and ratings. Roger understands that I've always gotten great ratings, whether it's on The Apprentice or virtually any interview. I think that's one of the things that's always fascinated Roger, because ultimately it is all about the ratings. That last clip comes from the Netflix documentary, Get Me Roger Stone. I'm joined by the film's director, Morgan Peme. He spent more than five years working with Stone on that documentary project. Also joined by Shelby Holliday, a reporter for The Wall Street Journal, who's been covering this probe and, of course, Roger Stone. You know these people better than most, spent more time with them than most. Yes. Uh, and everyone notices the carnival aspects. Uh, but Bob Mueller has proven himself to be interested in more than the carnival. What do you think is happening at this pressure point? Well, you know, what we've seen is that Bob Mueller doesn't captain a leaky ship. And anything that has come out of the probe has come from witnesses who have appeared in it, not from the special prosecutor's office himself. So, you know, when the Manafort indictment came down, we saw a whole bunch of stuff that we had no idea was out there mm -hmm. come to light. Um, I suspect that if there is an indictment, then we're going to see a lot of pieces of the puzzle that heretofore were unknown. Um, we know with Andrew Miller and with Kristen Davis, these are very close, loyal friends of Rogers, but more importantly, there are people who uh, were scheduling Rogers appointments, had access to his email, had access to his social media accounts. They're in a position to really attest to where Roger was, what he was doing, and when. Uh, but do you believe, based on uh, knowing him, that where he was was less interesting than sometimes where he claimed to be? That's certainly uh, Roger's M.O., is that he oftentimes uh, pretends to have a more robust uh, role in, in nefarious deeds than he actually does. Um, I haven't seen the smoking gun yet that, that seems that would place Roger in a whole heap of trouble, but certainly the, the Mueller investigation bringing Kristen Davis, Andrew Miller, uh, wanting to bring all these people around Roger in his orbit in, before a grand jury certainly telegraphs that they're getting closer and closer to Roger. Uh, Shelby, take a listen to Roger's latest uh, description of what he won't do. There is no circumstance in which I intend to be pressured in order to testify against the president. Uh, first of all, I have nothing that I could say about him that would be negative. And secondarily, uh, I'm just not going to do so that. I wouldn't rule out cooperating with the special counsel if I can be helpful in some area. But there is no circumstance under which I would testify against the president. Those two don't really go together. I mean, he's saying he won't testify against the president, but he has nothing to testify against. I mean, his arguments are interesting. They change from day to day. I would say reporting on him is a fascinating thing because he's a very intelligent, well-spoken, and tricky person. I mean, that's what he, he prides himself on. So anytime you approach him with something, for example, the Podesta tweet, he has an ex explanation uh, for why he sent that tweet and why it's totally irrelevant to the Mueller investigation. I thought the most telling part of Chris and Davis's interview 
And of other, other interviews that have been given by Roger Stone's associates is that they all say, all these people who have talked to Mueller's team, that Mueller is hyper-focused on collusion. That is in stark contrast to what Stone says in the press and in interviews, that he's worried about getting hammered for some sort of financial violation or something related to his PAC. Stone is trying to spin this as he could get in trouble for some crime unrelated to collusion, while everyone around him says, no, no, it's all about collusion. It's all about the messages you sent, the tweets that you exchanged, uh, the people you were in contact with, whether it was Julian Assange or Guccifer 2.0, that's what they're focused on. Well, I think you're raising an important piece of context about where the clues lead, as you often do, which is there are people who are operative in the White House, right, when, when they're interviewed, the implication when Sean Spicer is interviewed is that he might know something about all of this uh, kneecapping of the FBI, the firing of James Comey, the witch hunt, the efforts to impede the investigation, uh, which is obstruction. And a lot of Republicans argue, Morgan, that it's not really fair to try to take out a sitting president just over the way he deals with the FBI, no matter how, how terribly. Uh, Shelby points out that Roger is not that. He has zero interaction with President Donald Trump. He has not been seen entering the White House. He has no government role. Everything that Mueller's looking at here goes back to what they did during 2016. Of course, you were there, and you've told us before that there wasn't a ton of indication that he was actively spinning out some Trump campaign-backed Russian collusion. In terms of Roger, you know, Roger was always evasive about how often he communicated with Trump, the candidate. Uh, he did say that he would, he was writing memos in, in you know, very simple one-page memos so that Trump could digest them, uh, that he was submitting to the, to candidate Trump on a quasi-regular basis. Um, I, I, as I said on your show, he did seek to meet with Julian Assange, Roger Stone. I do not have any evidence that that meeting actually took place. Um, what we've seen, this kind of communication with WikiLeaks and with Guccifer so far, it's, it's very, um, it seems like very incomplete. Um, there's nothing there that, again, indicates that there was this master plan. Um, so, you know, it's very, you know, I'm, I'm as fascinated as anybody to find out how this is going to play out because there are certainly, we're, we're seeing what I feel like is a corner of the puzzle and Bob Mueller is looking at, you know, at, at the picture on the Box. Will there be a sequel? We'll see how it goes. But we're almost out of time. Final thought. I just think one of the things that's fascinating is it might be about how Roger Stone interacted online. The messages he was spreading coincide with what the Russian trolls were spreading, whether it was suppressing the black vote or claiming voter fraud. And I think a lot of his communications happened online. Even though he says he's somebody who conducts business by phone, he emails a lot of people. He text messages a lot of people. He was pretty active on social media, and this could come down to that. Right. And, the, and all the dealings with, uh, with Mr. Credico were also very recent texts right. that go to how he approached the investigation. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.